right, everybody. Um, we've got a special guest here today joining us on this last day of our startup spring break. So we've got Mayor Stoney here with us today, who's going to share a couple words about Richmond as an innovative city and the work that you all are doing as startup founders and entrepreneurs in this city and how that fits into the larger vision. So welcome, Mayor Stoney. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for having me. I mean, I, I asked this question right here because um, we've all been to college before, and so you all chose your, to do this for your spring break, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like you chose to do this for your spring break. I mean, that thing right there, and so that's a testament of what kind of uh, individuals we have in the room today, and I appreciate you guys doing so. Um, I am now looking at it now. I guess a little more than 60 or so, maybe even 70 days into my new job as the mayor of the great city of Richmond. And what I've been working on as the mayor is this concept, this mission of building one Richmond. No matter how you look, no matter who you pray to, who you love, what money may be in your bank account that you have a home right here in the city of Richmond. And I am um, working on creating a, um, a culture of we're not fighting the old wars of yesteryears and actually taking on the challenges that lie us in the future that will take us to the next level as a city. And when I look over this room right now, what I see is I see that one Richmond. It's my goal uh, to keep you entrepreneurs right here in the city. And I think I begin with that by creating a culture of inclusiveness and diversity. Uh, what I see in this room is diversity, and I see inclusiveness, and I think that we're better when we're all together. And I've been, uh, I'll admit in the first 60 or so days, I've done a couple of things that have kind of, um, let's just say, um, rubbed some people the wrong way, but I firmly believe in not tolerating intolerance, right? Um, and that, I think that, uh, provides, I think, an ecosystem for those who might be graduating from VCU or U of R or VUU to continue to make this their home long term. You know, in, in Richmond, we have a lot of challenges, um, but I think our successes outweigh our challenges. My goal as the new mayor of the city is to use the, the great assets we have, people like you all, to bridge the divides that we may have. Right? When I think of entrepreneurism, and entrepreneurship, I think that um, the future of the city lies right in this room. What new ideas, what innovations can actually solve the problems of our future? Or the problems that have, um, I would say, pestered us for many, many years. And I think about the fact that we have 26% of our residents who live in the poverty, under the poverty line, 40% of our children live in the poverty line. I think about, and then I think about the assets we have, the accolades that make uh, Richmond the great place that it is, well, how can we use the assets over on the right-hand side to bridge the divide and help those who may not have as much? Yeah. Sometimes those ideas lie right in what you all are doing. Because you all create jobs, you all solve, you, know, you solve a lot of our problems, and so using your entrepreneurship for social gain is important to me. But also, have, creating a place where you all want to live, I think, matters. Uh, the, the reducing the difficulty, uh, mitigating the difficulty of doing business with the city matters, right? I want you to be able to start your business here, your, pat you know, your, your, your patents here, and stay here and run a business instead of going off to San Francisco or New York or Washington, D.C. Those things that, that matter. But, you know, I think we also have to inject some of the traits that you all bring to your work every single day into government, right? And build the ability to be flexible, the ability to adapt. There's not a lot of that going on in government these days. There are some who say, oh, we should run government like a business. But I'll be honest, even though I might be 60 plus days in the job, I'm not naive. Government will never be a business. But we can actually utilize some of the traits that you all pursuing your businesses every single day. So we want to be more flexible. We've got to be versatile. We've got to be, um, we've got to take risk, right? 
I think what folks don't understand is you know, getting involved in business, it takes a lot of courage. Particularly when you go beyond yourself and your, your family, let's say, and you start putting people on your payroll. That there's another life, there's a reality on the other end. That's depending on your success or your failure. And I think what I'm trying to do over in City Hall is to let folks know that when we drop the ball, when we fumble, there's a reality on the other end. That's why I think that those two traits we share. Additionally, I think that we have to be bold. Right? Not only have to take risks, but can be bold. I could sit in City Hall amongst the 4,000 individuals who work for this city and I guess you could say tinker around, bite around the edges. Right? But are we really changing anyone's life? Are we really impacting anyone by doing that? And that's why I get to, my goal is to win every single day for the 220,000 residents who live in the city. I don't wake up each day shooting to be average. You all wake up being want to be average? No. You guys want to win. Right? You want to be the best at what you're doing. And I think in Richmond for far too long, being average and mediocre has been the gold standard. And I'm here to erase that. I'm here to change uh, what we've been maybe known for in the past. And so that means we've got to strive for excellence every single day, just like you all do. Right? We've got to have that standard. That means people got to be held accountable. We've got to be bold about what we're doing. I'm not here for them to play small ball. I'm here to actually, you know, Shoot for the moon. And you know what? Sometimes we're going to fail. Sometimes, you know what? In business and being a startup, you guys may fail. And then you guys take on that. You all know that going into this. But if we can shoot, wake up every day, try to win the day, try to win the week, try to win the month, try to win the year, I think we're going to bring some benefits back to the city and back to its residents. I'm not naive that we're going to be 52 and 0. That's winning 52 weeks. But well, you know what? 42 and 10 is not bad. And 45 and 7 sounds damn good. That's the sort of approach that I take to, um, to being the mayor of the city. And I know that's what you all take to your business. We have a lot to learn still. But I, have, I, I know, with you all being here, that that's a plus for Richmond and all of its residents. So my hope is, how can we, you know, my desire is that we create that ecosystem that allows you all to stay here long term, right? Not just here in the infant stages of your businesses, but the long term stages. My hope is that you guys find someone you love, and you, know, you buy a home right here in the city of Richmond, and you put your kids here in public schools here long term, and you continue to invest in your way. That's my goal. Now, I've got eight years to do that. It won't happen overnight, but you have my commitment that I'm going to bring the same passion to what I do, to, to what, the same passion you all possess to what I do every single day. We're going to get better every day. We're going to win every day, just like you guys do. So with that, I'll take some questions. <laughs>
decide to pioneer, whether it's in the arts or in the private sector, um, become pioneers in the city, who went into neighborhoods that no one wanted to go to, and then five or six years later, they find themselves on the brink of moving somewhere else or closing down. I think you do that, I think you've got to plan your work and then work your plan. And I think for a long time we haven't had a plan on what do we want to look like 25 years from now? What are we going to look like 50 years from now? I think that's how you avoid some of that messiness that you, you see in, in Northern Virginia. Yeah. Now here's the thing. There are a lot of people uh, in our town who would prefer us to look more like Charleston and Raleigh and places south of here. When the challenges that we have are probably more similar to Washington, D.C., and Baltimore. When you think about poverty and, you know, the, the, our, our challenges are more similar to them than they are those who are south of us. And so you're going to see, I think, a changing dynamic in the city. But while we change, we have to not forget about those who have been pioneers, those who paid their, more than their fair share to live here long term. And that's what, we got, that's what we'll be working towards. But is it good to be on the map and the folks want to move here? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. And you know what? I'm one of the believers who believe that. I, I believe firmly that in order to solve some of the problems that we do have, we're going to need more people who are more successful contributing to the greater good of the city. Um, you know, when you have one in four of your residents living on the poverty line, it puts a undue burden on services and government, and government. And so we need more and more people. We need to raise more and more of those people out of their current situation and give them an opportunity to contribute to the greater good. How do you want to do that? Well, you know, I um, have a. Uh, you know, this started way before I was the mayor. But you know, we are somewhat of a model nationally, uh, using the <coughs> office of. We, we created an office called Office of Community Wealth Building. That's goal is to raise 1,000 people out of poverty every single year. That means using all the resources at our disposal, uh, whether it's in healthcare, human services, education. Um, particularly, my focus has been on education, wrapping every service, every program we have in a very holistic manner around each and every child. I'm, I'm focused and invested in the classroom, yeah. but also, how about those hours that are not in the classroom, mm -hmm. right? Those are, I call, hours of opportunity. And you know what? Government can't do it all. But I know a lot of, I got a lot of friends in the private sector and the nonprofit sector who want us to solve this problem, who are helping us with that. But then also, you know, when I was Secretary of the Commonwealth before this role, um, the number of the folks who live in poverty right now, what is the barrier for many of them is the fact that some have a felony offense on their record. Reaching out to those in the private sector and saying, I need you to take yeah. this risk, this chance, on a person who's trying to better themselves. And maybe for some it's a very, very tough and difficult thing to do. But people don't understand what a career will do to the trajectory of one's family. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity to bring in that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And we need to move, you know, everything we do in City Hall has to match that same goal of raising a thousand people out of poverty. And so when I think about the portfolio we have focused totally on human services, social services, we're focused mainly on entitlement programs, how do we move that model just a little bit to wealth building, right? So everybody, you know, we're not, well, we're wealth building on one hand, but then on the other hand, we're providing entitlements that keep people in that same pervasive cycle. How do we move them from that cycle to a cycle of wealth building instead, but still, there's, there's a use for the, 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 the social services piece as well. Are you guys using like programs to do that, a thousand? Or like, are you working with Camp Hope or RCL? Like, are there You're not talking a language I'm not able to comprehend. Sorry. <laughs> um, are you guys working with any companies or nonprofits like currently now to do that? And yeah. like, what are they? Well, locally, the homegrown nonprofits normally, whether it's like Better Housing Coalition, okay. um, you know, a number of nonprofits like that. but. You bring up a good point that I think that this is what I need your help with. Yeah. Is that we don't use innovation is not spoken a lot in, in City Hall. We don't use data properly, right? I've gone to other cities 
who use data in a way that is just, um, uh, it, it changes the way. It, we have finite resources already, but if we, had, if we use data properly, we could put those resources to real good use, right? Like the ability to track a child from the time that they're born through our system. You know, these people interact with City Hall all the time. But I guarantee you can't walk over to City Hall right now and tell folks, well, are we all touching the same people? No one knows that, right? Like, no one knows that. And so I've gathered friends in the tech world around the table, and we're going to do even more. And John Belalis is here as my uh, you know, senior policy advisor for innovation. How can you all help us, like they've done in Philadelphia, to, as I said earlier, that social entrepreneurism right there. How can we harness what you're doing inside City Hall? Yeah. Help solve some of our problems. It's nothing novel, it's nothing novel about that. But we can save more money, right? And use those dollars for what they could really you know, be very, very helpful in investing in programs that are gonna help raise people out of poverty. Yeah. That's what I'm interested in, and it's a whole new, I think it's the whole being a millennial 35 year old yeah. mayor is kind of like, a, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> what I come to find out is this that no one, people don't like change, right? Uh, and you guys are in the change business, which I like. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they don't want you to disrupt the way they've done things for 20, 25 years. And we got folks who've worked in City Hall, and I appreciate them, who've worked in City Hall for 25, 30 years. Now, sometimes I'm like, what? You've been here for 35 years? I'm 35 years old. <laughs> it's unbelievable because in our generation, you know, uh, we hop around a lot, right? Yeah. You guys may start before you, over the next 10 years, you could possibly start two or three new businesses. That means two or three new jobs. Mm -hmm. I've had a number of jobs since graduating from college since two, in 2004. But the old days, you picked one job and you were a company man, a company woman, and you stayed with that job for 35, 40 years. Yeah. What we have to do, though, is we have to embrace encourage innovation inside those four walls of City Hall, and that, and that doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to be out of a job. Just we're going to show you how to do it better so we can help more people. Because when folks, when you introduce something new to people, they're like, you trying to run me out of here? And I'm like, no, I'm no. not trying to run you out. I'm not trying to make you better. See, I think people, I think <clears throat> people love change, like old and new. I just think they're scared of it. Uh -huh. And I think it's presented in a way that is, and people are like, you're trying to run me out, I'm going to go before you can kick me out. But really, if we presented it and marketed it in a way that you were like, no, this is actually what I want to do, here's the long-term plan, yeah. we're in it for the long haul, um, I think a lot of people are on board. Um, just like pitching my idea to like this group, it's like, yeah, like you could do this and this and this, and then pitching to the older generation, you have to like come at it in a way that's like, hey, this is what we're going to for, and this is what we're here for, but it's 30 years down the road, mm -hmm. and but we need your help now to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to think it's super overwhelming for some people too. It can be. Um, so yeah. It can be. Thank you. Not to disagree with you. No, no, no. I think we were saying the same thing. I think we were saying the same thing, but you yeah. know, I can articulate a little better and say like they're more, uh, uh, change is the, 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 that's the part. That's the, yeah. yeah. They're afraid of it. It's like, I don't. I mean, so, for instance, we adopt certain innovations inside City Hall, and the folks say, you know what? I've been doing this way for 25 years. I'm going to continue to do it for 25 years. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what new system you brought in here or what new computer you want to put in front of me. I'm going to still do this the same way I learned 25 years ago. Which makes, it keeps them as a valuable member of the team because they have all that institutional knowledge. Yeah. And they're like, you know what? Well, if you get rid of me, all that institutional knowledge is gone. Yeah. And so they kind of buck that they, they buck the transition to innovation by saying, I'm just going to do it the same way. Yeah, where I think our generation, my generation specifically. I think um, we're the same generation. Just <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Um, I'm we, on the bubble. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, we just have to have the respect to that older generation to say, this is really what we want to do, instead of like, no, here's the computer. Just do it. Um, but I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a lot of people, like my friends and everything, kind of compare Richmond to Austin before South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see if that was what you thought. But I also, on top of that, I just wanted to, 
I'm gonna ask you what you think Richmond does best, like culturally. What is it that makes Richmond so like a cultural hotspot? Hmm. That's the first one. We want to answer that first. I think um, first I, I want to give props to uh, VCU because I believe they've been a driver for a very very long time. I think I, I look back at when we started to turn that corner, we became a you know a hot uh, being a hot destination. VCU's success on the on the hardwood had to deal with a little bit of that because folks were like what's this what's the city of Richmond. I also kind of couple that with. <coughs> This being, I think, one of the, it was like a center of the universe when it came to the presidential election in 2008, when President Obama was first running, and this was a battleground state, and Richmond was an epicenter of a lot of that. And then I tie it to, um, this became, we became an arts, history, and cultural capital. And it all kind of, you know, you think about the history we have here, you think about the arts, you know, all, you know, VCU being a driver as well, but, you know, Virginia, Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, all that, it created this cultural capital that, it cannot be it, it, it cannot be replicated anywhere else in Virginia, at least, right? This is the urban capital of Virginia. This is the arts, history, and cultural capital of Virginia. So I grew up in Hampton Roads. I've worked in Northern Virginia. They got none of what, what we have right here. They don't have it. We do, and I think it's because we have a mix. We have a, it's a diverse population. It's um, it's young. It's um, and it's progressive, right? And that, that, I think that's why we are the city that I think that, you know, that's being spoken about across, across the country. Um, so I think that's what we do well. And when I think about comparing ourselves to other cities, when I was running for office, I said, like, well, Charlotte has this, and Nashville has that, and all that stuff. And people said, like, well, we don't want to be Nashville. We don't want to be Charlotte. I now speak in, in terms of we can be better than those places. We can, there's more to be had than what Nashville has or to or what Charlotte has or what Raleigh has. What we have to do though is um, just what I said earlier, we gotta start being bolder about, you know, I think the knock on Richmond, the knock on the new South or, or the old South is that it takes forever and a day <laughs> to do things that some would find basic in other parts of the country. Right? And so I think VCU and the younger population here has helped driven us a little bit past that, but we still have a ways to go to, to catch up. I think a lot of folks who tell me, that's what I said in my office yesterday, it's like, I want a 21st century Richmond. A Richmond that's competitive no matter where you put it in this country. Competitive with Northeast cities, competitive with Pacific Northwest cities, uh, competitive with capital cities throughout the country. That's what I want. And I think our moment is right, right now, um, and I think uh, looking back at the election that took place in November, people ask me all the time, so what does your election say about you? And I said, well, it's not what it says about me. What my election says about Richmond is the key, that we're moving beyond the same players, the same folks who've run the city for a very long time to a place where we know where we want to go. That's what I think our election meant. And I think I feel um, compelled and responsible to take us to that next level. With you guys' help. Mm -hmm. Students heard this earlier. So this was our prototype where we have 20 BCU student startup companies with us this week. But the School of Business Foundation at BCU made the investment that next year, this event is across the Commonwealth. And BCU will be hosting the top two student ventures from every public university in the Commonwealth here at VCU and in Richmond for the for week. spring break. For spring break. Richmond, spring break, hotbed destination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Watch out, Daytona. <laughs> it's, possible, it's possible because of what you're talking about that the city of Richmond brings. So what it says about the future of the city of Richmond, what it represents to the rest of the Commonwealth and the country. And so the next year when we're, you know, we had fantastic speakers here, speakers that made investments in our students in multiple ways, but what does it look like when we're attracting the attention of the Bay Area, of the New Yorks, of all across the country, and they come here for spring break with you? Because they recognize that Richmond as a city is going to look beyond Nashville, look beyond Austin to be the next thing, and look what happens when a university is willing to be bold and say, someone asked, why isn't Tech doing this? Why isn't UVA doing it? And I said, because we're doing it first. 
right? They're not doing it. And we're going to do it better. I'm a Jane you grad. And you are invited. <laughs> Well, I love you. And, and it's about stepping forward and saying, we'll see. There might be some bumps. We did this for the first time. We'll learn some things from it. Will it be perfect? Probably not. But are we going to have a lot? We're going to have 150 student entrepreneurs here next year from all across the Commonwealth enjoying Richmond and bringing additional focus to Richmond and the innovation that's present here and the talent that exists in Richmond and across the Commonwealth. And I think we share that very theme of being bold, driving innovation. And I mean, you all are a big part of it, right? You make this easy. Um, all I had to do was book some space, and we bought you some food, and then you go, you guys go and launch new ventures and close deals. So, yeah. thanks for making this easy for folks like us. That sounds hard. To me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also have some other great mentors here that wanted to spend some time with you guys over lunch. So, uh, we'll take another. I think some of you guys already got food. We'll let the, the mayor and his group get some food and have time as his schedule allows. And please engage with our other guests that are here to to continue mentoring you and spend time with you. So.